What's up guys, this is the House from Gun Gamers, and uh, today I have a subject that I find kind of interesting. Uh, hopefully you guys will find it as interesting as I do as I keep talking about it, but basically the idea of today's video came from a couple of recent events. Uh, it was originally spurred on by the fact that, wow, there was, a, there was quite some fallout when American Milsim announced that Cost had won uh, Broken Home. And some people were really uh, quite perturbed by the fact that American Milsim announced a winner for the first time in years because they hadn't previously announced winners. Uh, and then some people were, you know, salty about the result and there was all kinds of banter back and forth, all kinds of stuff. And I initially had planned to make a video talking about, you know, Milsim event promoters and announcing winners and all that. And then this past weekend, uh, I went out onto the airsoft field. I went to Ground Zero Airsoft in Connecticut, visited my friend Joe, who lives out there, and we played. And you know what? I just feel like uh, we ended up having a rough go of it, and we did not win. Uh, we did not win that day. They don't. I don't know if they technically announced winners for that, but they didn't have to. It was pretty obvious. Uh, and as a result of those two experiences, it kind of changed what I want to talk about in this video and how I want to talk about it. I want to talk today about does winning matter? Like how much does winning matter? How much should it matter? You know, do you, should you care when a Milsim event promoter announces a winner? Should you care about all that kind of stuff? Uh, obviously what I'm going to be talking about today applies far more to operation style games and Milsim style games. Uh, you know, Speedsoft, the point of Speedsoft is that it's more of a tournament structure. So that's entirely different you know, can of worms. I'm talking about the more LARPy type of games, the big games with hundreds of players on, you know, AOs and but I'm going to talk about all of that and more in today's video. Uh, I am drinking Octomore, which is probably one of the best Isla Scotches I've ever had. And uh, yeah, so let's get it. Let's dig into this. So for those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, you've probably guessed that I really don't take this aspect of airsoft very seriously. Uh, now. I will play on the field as if I'm trying to win, and I will play on the field to the best of my ability, but I have personally never gotten super invested in the idea of the factional loyalty and the factional, really, tribalism it becomes to a certain extent, and the investment in the overall, like, we won this event, and taking it very personally if my team won or lost. And I think the reason for that is because, frankly, at an event with hundreds of players, taking whatever the result is personally is asinine. It's ridiculous. You are such a small part of what makes up the whole of your team that taking it personally, either taking personal credit or personal blame or getting mad or getting ridiculously happy that your team won, you are such a small element of why that happened. There are hundreds of players on this AO. There was a game design that was laid out. There was an AO that you have to factor in. And there were numbers and equipment differences and so many things that can go into why one team won or lost that if you get really attached to the result, the thing you have to remember is the result may not even be a representation of the skills of the players on the field. And this is something that always goes on in sports is whoever won the day was not necessarily the better team. They were the better team that day. And I want to expand that to say for Airsoft, the whoever won the day of Airsoft was not necessarily the better team. They were the better team that day with the right circumstances and everything that happened to help them win or to help you lose, or to help you get as close to winning as you could. And what can affect the outcome of a Milsim game is a laundry list. You have AO considerations, you have numbers considerations, you have organization considerations, you have leadership considerations, you have op plan considerations, you have mission considerations, you have all these different things that come together to make it where Milsim games and operation structured games are never going to be completely balanced and Milsim games and operation structured games 
are never going to be designed to be super competitive. Game design on a milsim level and for a milsim type game is not designed to be competitive. It is designed that players playing these games have an experience that allows them to feel like they are part of a mission and allows them to carry out these missions to the best of their ability. It's not game design to a certain extent, if you know what I mean. It's not battlefield. There's not a field that was fine-tuned and finely crafted in every element, every placement of every blade of grass was designed so that there's multiple avenues of approach. Things can go wrong in a field layout, even just from the weather or just from the way the underbrush has grown that year. Or things can go wrong on an AO just from the fact that barricades were taken down that were supposed to be there or trees were cut down that were supposed to be there. Or, hey, turns out this part of the AO is out of play because it was deemed unsafe or this part of the AO is out of play because maybe someone else had read it out for that weekend. You never know what's going to happen. There are so many factors that can throw a wrench into game balance that getting super invested in we were the better team, maybe you weren't. And maybe if you lost, maybe you weren't the worst team. And I know that sounds like uh, you know someone being salty about the fact that, oh, well, the winner was always just at an advantage. I understand that people are going to say that, and I understand that that's how it sounds the way I'm explaining it. But I've been on the winning side of games where I looked at it objectively and said, you know what, we won this game because we had this advantage, because our team had some kind of design level advantage, our team had some kind of numbers advantage, our team had more weapons. Perfect example of this. My team was, my fire team was part of the defense of Astrakhan at Milsim West, the Caspian Breakout. And we were on the north. Our fire team, or our weapon squad, was just seven dudes, not really that good at BB Wars, quite frankly. And we're just sitting there, and we're just watching a gate. 50 NATO, probably. I, I, it was a ton of people charged this gate. They outnumbered us significantly. And they could have been the best players that day. They could have been the best guys charging the hardest with the best equipment, all the right tools, the best leadership. But they were charging a gate that was wide enough for maybe six or seven of them shoulder to shoulder. And we had three PKMs trained on it. You could argue that, hey, well, we were the better team because we set up the better ambush. But in that moment, who was better didn't matter because we had three machine guns trained on a gate that they couldn't get through. And these guys were tripping over their friends. That's an example of the type of situation where who's the better player kind of doesn't matter because the situation is so stacked that seven guys can hold off like 50 long enough for reinforcements to come up until the West End falls. We're not that good at BB Wars. We didn't do anything super skilled. We just sat there and shot fish in a barrel and we won that engagement until we had to fall back, unfortunately, because they attacked the West at the same time. But I'm using that microcosm of an event as an example of how things can stack the odds in your favor. And a skilled player will try to go into situations where the odds are stacked in their favor, but sometimes for game design reasons, you can't do that. You might end up attacking with a smaller element than is defending. And you know how that usually goes? Not well. There's situations where you can make that work, but it generally doesn't. So I want to talk a little bit about, now that we've understood why there are so many factors that can throw off the balance of a Milsim game, and why maybe you shouldn't take the result personally, win or lose, how, well, how do you reconcile that? Well, what's the point of going to a Milsim game? And I actually want to cite a source here, uh, you know, a friend of mine, Yuck, from American Milsim. I don't know if he wants to be saying his full name and whatnot on video, but he actually made a phenomenal post that he did make public. I'm going to put that down in the description. And he talked about the fact that this announcement of victory, he understood why people felt like the announcement of winning and losing didn't fully represent the degree of effort and the degree of skill that was put on by the players. And I do think that is why people get attached to these results, because 
If you were charging hard all weekend and you accomplished all your missions and your squad kicked ass, but your team still lost, I can understand why you would feel salty about the result being announced. But that's exactly why I think that you need to remember what a small piece of the puzzle you are and what a small piece of the puzzle your fire team or your squad is in the grand scheme of your team and ultimately the other things that are beyond your control that add an element of randomness to the game and that are always going to make it so that a perfectly balanced milsim game is basically impossible. And uh, in Yuck's post, he made the point at Broken Home specifically that UFS had to do more with less because of the situation they were in. He, as the commander of the winning team, felt that his opponent was at a disadvantage. He was you know, objective enough and honest enough to look at the situation and say, yeah, we had the upper hand. We had more people. We had easier missions as a result of that. We had some certain field advantages and things went our way. I commend him for you know, being on that level of awareness to say, hey, this is what happened. And I think that his level-headed, cool response to all this, and I personally know Yuck, and he's always gracious in victory and defeat. I think that he is the example of someone who gets all of this, who understands, hey, this is how BB Wars works. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You can't take it personally. All you got to do is go out and have fun. And that was kind of the situation I found myself in this past weekend. Uh, we were outnumbered very significantly uh, the first half of the day at Ground Zero Airsoft. So us accomplishing any major missions was pretty much a non-starter. We had very few people, and the people we did have were just people who were having various forms of trouble. You know, some of my guys were having equipment trouble. Uh, some of my guys were having, you know, personal problems. Then you, you have people who are not that experienced to, you know, contribute more or less to the team. And what do you do in that situation? How do you, when you find yourself in the situation of, well, I'm losing today. We're, we're going to lose. We're, there's not much we can do. How do you handle that? You handle it the way I handle it. You say, fuck it. I'll go throw myself at a wall. I know that sounds weird the way I put that, but I'm going to quote the, uh, the XO of our team or our RTO. I forget what exact position he was in. Uh, a guy named Austin. And... His point when we were at Southern Strike at Desert Fox events, because we were super outnumbered, we had a lot of disadvantages of that game. And his phrase that sticks with me is, a bad plan that everyone does is better than a good plan that no one does. And his point with that and what kept us moving and charging throughout the event was, guess what? This is BB Wars. These things happen. You end up in bad situations. Sometimes you're in a no-win situation. Well, you could have the best tactics or the best plan or the best thing, but if it's a non-starter, if it's not going to get off the ground and if no one's going to do it, you're going to end up sitting there and nothing's going to happen. So go throw yourself at a wall. Go die a bunch. Go do fun, crazy things because that is going to make you have a better time and give you a better chance of success, quite frankly, if you can get enough people to do that. If you can carry that attitude with you into games, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what's happening, you're going to have a better time. You're going to have more fun. And that is the point of Airsoft. As I said earlier, I play as if I intend to win, and I do try to play hard. I'm a very physical player. I'm a very hard charger. I like to go in, and I like to get things done. But at the end of the day, it is just about, I paid to be here. I paid to come have fun and shoot plastic BBs at people and try to accomplish missions. If it isn't going to happen for one reason or another, I'm going to try to make it happen. You can never just quit. What's the point of going to an event you paid to play at and quitting because you're salty about losing or getting salty about losing? You paid to come here and have an experience. Whether that experience is winning or losing, that's the experience you're having. Make the best of that experience. Go do dumb shit. Go do fun shit. Make it a fun day. Near the end of the day, one of my friends was uh, having some trouble his equipment was not working properly. He was a bit salty, and he was just not having a good day. I ended up giving him my rifle, because his shit wasn't working, pulling out my pistol, 
and saying, there's 20 minutes left in the game. We're not going to the parking lot. We're going to go try to sneak into their base. And you know what? We got shot doing it. We had a brief firefight. I got shot in the nuts. And then I had some hilarious banter with the enemy team before the game was called. That, to me, is worth it way more than just getting mad and storming off the field because you're losing and because you're going to lose because the game is pretty much over. Why bother doing that? Go have fun. Go do dumb shit. That's my point. Hopefully, the way I've verbally meandered around for what looks to be way too long has driven that point home. Anyway, this video was brought to you by Octomore. Damn good Isla Whiskey. Ah, oh, just absolute peep monster. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope maybe some of my ramblings and musings have uh, made you re-examine the way you look at the game, made you re-examine if you take these things a little too seriously and if it ruins your experience. I want you to remember a quote that I'm going to shamelessly steal from Josh Warren of Milsim West because he does this for every Milsim West game and I adore it. Uh, he has you do the oath of the reasonable mill simmer, and it ends with, I will always remember that I am at a wonderful party with my wonderful friends wearing a really cool costume and having a great time. So go do that. Anyways, the Z House from Gun Gamers, and I'm signing off. Peace.